Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdut's Newsstand, and in the last couple days, I have taken a couple steps back. It took some time to reflect. I did the basics on my channel while I decided what I was going to do, whether it was quit making videos, lean into something I don't believe, and hope that I can accept myself, leave my videos up, and not come back, make an excuse as to why... And kind of accept defeat. But I think I've finally come to grips with what actually needs to be done. So do me a favor. Hit like and leave me a comment after listening to this video. This one is kind of more personal. So I want to kind of get it out in the algorithm if at all possible. Who knows if that'll happen. So I think many kind of have a misunderstanding that I am out to get anti SJWs when that's so far from the truth. The argument is like this, right? So SJWs and other left-leaning people have taken over comics, movies, music, previously nerdy properties, and are changing them for their own narratives and, and their own influence. This, in fact, is called the culture war. We live in a world that everything is politicized, right? That's what the culture war is, and it's newer, right? I would argue, honestly, the exact opposite. It's been going on since the 1960s, and the bigger story here is that culture kind of underwrites our politics, just like climate underwrites the weather or schooling underwrites education. Our culture, culture war was waged and lost, honestly, long ago. Depending on your views, of course, in this situation. And of course, the easier way to describe this is what most are arguing or complaining about is the shift in Overton's window. That's the issue. That's the bottom line issue there. Overton's window shifted further left and it bugs people on the right. But like I said earlier, none of this is really new. The 60s gave us the sexual revolution and the introduction of socialism, which led to the countering of that kind of, right? In the 80s, where American patriotism and capitalism was really at its highest. And now we're seeing the counter to that movement in the 80s, and we're seeing a hard push in socialism by many that do not even really understand it and a huge push on identity politics and equity instead of equality, which is a counter-reaction to oppression and degradation for many years, and a push for superiority, I would argue here that most things have always been politicized, and it's new that you're noticing it. A good example of this would be static shock. The right was outraged a few months ago, right, over the change in origin, and originally... So was I. Static has always been deeply rooted in politics and includes that includes his very introduction, his inception, talking about gangs, racism, gun control. And once I went back and re-looked at those old static shock episodes, re-read those old issues, I realized I just didn't notice it when I was younger. And I changed my mind. I've seen so many say that they don't like echo chambers, yet they accept their opinion that don't accept, I'm sorry, other opinions, even when I never present my opinion as objective truth, but always as an opinion. And many times it's met with being told I'm definitively wrong or worse, completely disrespectful when simply trying to stay a more median or centralized approach or opinion. Um, this is where I'd like to talk about Julia Galef, who is the author of Scout Mindset and the co-founder of the Center for Applied Rationality. She's awesome. She's adorable. She's cute and she's smart. I love it. She speaks on two different types of personalities generally, though. The first one being the soldier. This personality type is likes the um, elevation in their adrenaline spikes, right? They like the fight. Uh, and their motivations generally are rooted in their need to protect. Whether it's yourself or your views or your side. And then, of course, rooted in defeating the enemy. And then you have 
something similar to my personality type, the scout. This type doesn't attack or defend. Their job is to understand, always asking kind of the question, what if, right? But what makes these two um, mindsets different is they're both rooted in emotions. The soldier mindset is very tribalistic and defensive. The emotion usually displayed by scouts are more of a curiosity, an itch to learn, an itch to solve a puzzle, an itch to look at all the different things. Um, something I love doing is, you know, going through and getting Easter eggs. I love solving those little teeny tiny things. Um, I, I myself also personally think it's virtuous to test your own beliefs. I think it's virtuous to admit when you're wrong and then learn from your mistake. I once, um, recently, I just did this with Jeffrey Thorne. I reacted too quickly to a story that was run by Bleeding Cool about his hate for Hal Jordan. I did eventually walk back my statements. I apologized to both him and my audience. And more importantly, it taught me something huge. I was being too reactionary in nature, especially now that I've read three issues from Jeffrey Thorne's Green Lantern run and Oh, chef's kiss. It is one of the best books at DC right now. And I've said it since the beginning of this channel. I'm not a huge Green Lantern fan. I love me some Jessica. I love Simon Baz. Um, but I never have been a huge Green Lantern fan. But those I read simply because they were done uh, by Jeff Johns. And Jeffrey Thorne is, is killing it. I'm not kidding. He's doing great. I really am enjoying that. So... My self-worth, though, has never been tied to how right or how wrong I am. And honestly, I don't think anybody should be. Democracy is, or rather it should be, um, an agreement that we not kill each other over our differences, but instead we talk things out and compromise, right? So if I report a story um, like, like Jeffrey Thorne and I was wrong, I have no issue admitting that. We learn from our mistakes. Our mistakes um, are to, you know, teach us and make better judgments in the future. Don't double down. Don't yell woke at everything. Um, don't, you know, yell woke and hope one sticks to the wall. We're seeing that recently with literally everything. Learn how to feel proud and admit when you're wrong instead of feeling ashamed. Learn the feeling of intrigue when new information that contradicts your beliefs come up. Be intrigued. Want to learn about it. Instead of defending false information, even if you previously thought it was true, learn to want to see the world for what it actually is. That's the most important thing. Not what you think it is, but what the reality of it is. Just because your favorite YouTube personality says something, it does not make it the objective truth. Sometimes I like exploring the other side and understanding um, where most don't. And then worse, some YouTubers give false information and it's toted as facts. Um, a recent example of that is the uh, previous Mary Marvel being fired for an Instagram post where she supported Ashley Babbitt. It's clear that this, you know, woman is very left-leaning and there's never been anything reported that that's why she was fired, but it is now being toted in different videos and comment section that that is why she was fired. Or when everyone says that Mangold, you know, searched out his name in a post when it was completely false, and I heard that in multiple videos, including, I believe, Yellow Flash and Geeks and Gamers. I know you guys like examples, but I don't like calling people out, but I'll give you an example there. When that was completely false, he was sent the information. Though I am not saying they present it as willful lies, it could have been accidental or ignorance. But when I present correct information, it's then doubled down and doubted as false, even when there's proof. If you have proof in front of your eyes, start believing the proof. Um, unfortunately, the YouTube algorithms don't help with this kind of outrage situation. The more you watch outrage, the more YouTube recommends it. YouTube um, algorithms kind of facilitate the echo chamber, unfortunately. To keep you watching YouTube serves you up more similar videos than what you've seen before, right? And then... 
when you've seen it before and you've heard it before and you'll watch it again, that reinforces your beliefs over and over and over again, even if it is based in intellectual dishonesty. Meaning, if you watch cartoons, if you watch uh, DC superhero girls, they're going to recommend more DC superhero girls, right? They'll rep they'll recommend it more often. But the tr same is true with outrage videos. If you watch them, of course, YouTube is going to recommend it. And it has a way of repeating information and that serves in your mindset that it's true and or widely believed, even if it is a vocal minority. So if everyone is reporting this sexuality change or race swap in a comic book, start trying to be intellectually honest with yourself. And what I mean by that is um, I often get comments that are like, OK, well, all straight white males will be gone from comic books or, you know, something similar to that. Um Failing to see Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Captain America, Iron Man, right? Like, I can keep going on. But it's intellectually dishonest to use this as an argument because you know your argument is inherently wrong as you're writing it. Criticizing a new change is absolutely fine. <laughs> like, I have no issue with that whatsoever. I personally do it. I criticize a lot of what DC does. I criticize a lot of their changes. But in reality... Most characters were created as straight white men because the Comics Code Authority did not allow for queer characters to be made. Not to mention, many characters were created in a time that was honestly rooted in racism and promoted as white because they didn't want to lose that audience, especially in the South. You can fact that, check that. It comes from D.C. So, yes, you are seeing more characters of color or a different orientation. And that is because it is very new for them to even be allowed. I don't want them to change legacy characters just like you. I'm not saying that. But that does not stop me from liking new characters. So many people yelled, create new characters, just create new characters, just create new characters, they said, right? And then when it's done, the hate always happens. Start being more intellectually honest with yourself. <laughs> it will only help you as a person, and it's something I'm trying to work on also. Most of all, stop being the NPCs of the right. And I'm not trying to sound mean or anything here, but stop letting other people determine your views. Stop acting like you're getting the real information when it's blatantly used for a narrative or false. Stop letting others manipulate you. Start thinking for yourself. There may be thousands, and I mean thousands probably, <laughs> of other YouTubers or people out there more qualified to speak about culture or about comics or about outrage, or about a sexual orientation change, or about anything I mentioned, they're probably more qualified than me. And I may fail over and over and over again. I may fail and lose all viewership. And I may get things wrong. Oh, but unfortunately, I have this irrational optimism, or even stubbornness, and I, I can look at my views at, with worth. Look at my conversations in the comment section with you guys with love. Or look at um, many sending me hate with, you know, still wanting to pursue this. I should change. I won't. I cannot undo what I am doing and what I have tried to build in this community. And that is welcoming, truly accepting all opinions, truly caring what each one of you think. Failure would be more liberating than quitting. So I won't. I've decided I'm going to keep trying. Not going to change my views, though. And unfortunately, that's probably to my detriment. But like I said, I am I, I have irrational optimism and, and I'm not changing that. I think it's um important to continue to try to keep that because it's very rare these days. So anyways, let me know what you guys think. I am going to have things start going back to normal on my channel with normal uploads and live streams. I haven't live stream in two weeks because I've been so down because of this. I'm going to get back to normal. I'm not going to start. I'm not going to keep letting other people determine how I feel. So anyways, let me know, of course, what you guys think. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.